Okay, good day to all science students. In this video lesson, this is the continuation of the discussion about stages of mitosis. Para madali natin matanda ating itong stages ng mitosis, tandaan po natin itong PMAT, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Okay, let us discuss first the prophase. In prophase, this is the stage of chromosome replication. The chromosomes condense and the spindle forms. The nucleus disassembles, the nuclear envelope breaks up, and the spindle fibers attach to the chromosomes. So, may inattach pa ako ditong video na paliwanag tungkol sa kabuuan nito. The stages of mitosis. So, nasa, nasa last part po. Kaya, tapusin po natin itong video nito. Okay, ito yung detailed information about the prophase. The nucleus disappears in the nucleus. This serves as a starting signal. Kapag nawala na pala po yung nucleus sa loob ng nucleus, a starting signal of the prophase. And then, the nuclear membrane disintegrates. Next, the chromatin fibers become more tightly coiled as they condense into discrete chromosome. Each chromosome appears as two identical sister chromatids joined at the centromere. In the cytoplasm, the spindle fibers begin to form. They are made up made of microtubules arranged between the two centrioles. And then, the centrioles move away from each other propelled by the lengthening bundles of microtubules between them. So, for the metaphase, this is the st step in which the chromosomes form in prophase move to the middle of the cell. These chromosomes line up along the equator of the cell. So, kung iti-detail po natin, so the centrioles are now at the opposite pole of the cell. So, the chromosomes gather at metaphase plate, an imaginary plane that is equidistant from two centrioles. The centromeres align with one another at the metaphase plate. So, ito, ito po yung tinutukoy na uh, imaginary line itong metaphase plate. So, dyan naka-arrange yung, naka-align yung centromeres. Ito po yung mga centromeres. So, each sister chromatid faces the opposite poles of the cell. The core of identical chromatids is attached to the spindle fibers radiating from the opposite end of the parent cell. So, for anaphase is where the chromosomes separate and move to opposite sides of the cell. Shortening spindle fibers separate the chromosomes. So, the once joined sister chromatids begin to move along the microtubules toward the opposite folds of the cell. The spindle fibers become shorter, pulling the chromosomes along with them. So, each chromatid is now cro is considered an individual chromosome. At the end of anaphase, the two poles of the cell have an equal set of chromosomes. So, for the telophase, this is the nucleus wherein the nucleus reforms and the membrane appears between each mass of chromosomes. This newly formed membrane divides the cytoplasm. Once this is completed, the two separate cells repeat the process. So, nuclear membranes start to reform at the two poles of the cell where the chromosomes have gathered. The nuclear membranes are constructed from the fragments of the former nuclear membrane of the cell. So, the nucleoli appear, reappear in the chromatin fibers of each chromosome and coil. So, the end of the telophase marks the completion of the equal division of a nucleus into two genetically identical nuclei. This is called cardiogenesis. So, nakaproduce na po siya ng dalawang magkaparehas na nuclei. So, dito naman sa ating uh, mitosis matching, ang sasagot lang po natin is prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and cytokinesis. So, the sister chromatids are moving apart. Yung paghihiwalay ng dalawang chromatids. So, that is in anaphase. The nucleus begins to fade from view. Prophase, yung, yung pagsisimula. Ano po? Yung nucleus begins to fade or begin to disappear. The cell plate is completed. So, that is cytokinesis. The spindle is formed. So, prophase. The chromosomes become invisible. So, that is entelopase. The chromosomes are located at the equator of the cell. That is metaphase. Okay. Cell division is completed. Uh, that is in the last part. Cyt cytokinesis. The nuclear membrane begins to fade from view. That is prophase. The division cleavage furrows appears. So cytokinesis. The chromosomes are moving towards the pole of the cell. Okay, anaphase. Chromatids line up along the equator. Metaphase. The reverse of prophase. Okay, telophase. The organization phase. That is prophase. A new nuclear membrane is forming around chromosome. Okay, telophase. The cytoplasm of the cell is being divided. The last part, cytokinesis. Okay, these are the guide questions in this uh, all about mitosis. So, what happens to the chromosomes during prophase? Ano daw nangyayari sa chromosome kapag uh, nasa stage na ng prophase? So, during prophase, the chromosomes condensed and the centrosomes moved to opposite sides of the nucleus, initiating formation of the mitotic spindle. So, number two, why are 
chromosomes condense and scattered during this phase. So this condensation is needed to allow the chromosomes to move along the mitotic spindle without becoming tangled or broken during their distribution to daughter cell. So how are chromosomes aligned during metaphase? So during metaphase, the cell's chromosomes align themselves in the middle of the cell through a type of cellular tug of war. The chromosomes which have been replicated and remain joined at a central point called the centromere are called sister chromatids. So number two, what is the significance of this alignment in mitosis? Okay, it ensures mitotic fidelity by promoting interchromosomal compaction during anaphase. So what occurs to the chromatids during anaphase? So during anaphase, each pair of chromosomes is separated into two identical independent chromosomes. So how does this stage contribute to cell division? So to make sure that each daughter cell has a full set. What changes are observed in telophase compared to the earlier stages? So the chromosomes begin to uncoil, which makes them diffuse and less compact. Why is the formation of new nuclei crucial for cell division? So this newly formed nuclei are surround the genetic material which uncoils such that the chromosomes return to loosely packed chromatin. Nucleoli also reappear within the no new nuclei and the mitotic spindle breaks apart. Each new cell receiving its own complement of DNA organelles, membranes, and centrioles. To make sure the... So panawarin po natin ito. look down at your leg or your arm to find some cut and you have no idea where it came from or how you got it. So you put a bandage on it and a few days later it's gone. It's all healed and you don't even think anything of it of this amazing process that causes this to happen. Or let's say you're looking at your nails and you notice they're a lot longer since the last time you cut them. Or let's say you're looking in the mirror and you notice that you are a lot bigger than you were when you were five years old. What do all of these things have in common? Well, one major thing they have in common is mitosis. Mitosis is a type of cell division done by most of your body cells and it's really important for cells to divide. If they didn't divide, you wouldn't grow. I mean, how do you grow if you can't make more cells, right? So one reason why you're bigger than you were when you were five is mitosis. Mitosis also is great for repair of damage. If you have some kind of accident, like when we were talking about that cut on your arm or leg, well, you want to make sure it gets repaired well. So you have to make more cells to do that. Mitosis is great for that. Now, it's really important to understand what it is not. Mitosis is not a process that makes sperm or egg cells because that's something different called meiosis, which sounds like mitosis, unfortunately, but it's a different process. Mitosis is done to produce body cells. Mitosis makes identical cells. That is the goal, identical cells. So if you're trying to make more skin cells to replace worn out or damaged skin cells, you don't want to start suddenly making stomach cells there. That would be ridiculous. You want to make sure you have identical cells replacing what was lost. So mitosis makes identical cells. It's a really important thing. Now it's also important to understand that your cells are not dividing all the time. If all they did was divide, it would just be rapid, crazy growth. In fact, this is kind of what cancer is. Cancer is uncontrolled cell growth. We have a clip on the cell cycle and what the cell is usually doing most of its daily life, which is actually a phase called interphase, where it's growing and replicating its DNA and carrying out its daily cell functions. That's where cells spend most of their time in respect to the whole cell cycle. Mitosis is a very short amount of time in respect to the whole cell cycle, but mitosis is a critical process because this is where it is going to divide and make more cells. Before we get into the steps of division, it's really important to understand that your cells have something inside them, an organelle called the nucleus. And the nucleus holds your DNA. DNA is really important because it's your genetic information. And if you're going to make more cells, you need to have the same DNA in those new cells as you did in your original cells. You want it to be identical, no mistakes, very important. The problem is you've got a lot of DNA and we've got to get that DNA into the new cells using mitosis. So there has to be a better way to organize that DNA. Well, what actually happens is that DNA can be organized into these condensed units called chromosomes. Chromosomes are made of DNA and protein. You've probably heard before that humans have 46 chromosomes. That means 46 chromosomes are found in most human body cell nuclei. What are nuclei? Well, it's the plural of nucleus. You don't say nucleuses, you say nuclei. Well, in the nuclei, there are 46 chromosomes. Organizing DNA into condensed chromosomes makes it a lot easier to move over when you're making new cells. So if you have 46 chromosomes in a human body cell, 
you have to duplicate those chromosomes in interphase before mitosis starts. That basically means you are duplicating your DNA, since chromosomes are made of DNA and protein. You have to do this before mitosis starts, because if you're going to make an identical cell that has 46 chromosomes, just like the original, well, it makes sense you have to duplicate the genetic material before splitting. So if you look at our cell cycle video clip, we talk about interphase. That's a stage where most of the time cells are spending their time. They're actually duplicating their DNA during that time. So ready for the tricky part? Well, because we tend to count chromosomes by the number of centromeres present, when the 46 chromosomes duplicate, we still say there are 46 chromosomes, as the sister chromatids are still attached, and we're counting by centromeres. So 46 chromosomes here, they replicate in interphase, and you still have 46 chromosomes in this picture, but you went from 46 to 92 chromatids. We have a video explaining that in more depth and how that factors in for mitosis. Okay, so now we can get right into mitosis. I like to tell students to remember PMAT. It's a little acronym that helps you remember. The P is for prophase, the M is for metaphase, the A is for anaphase, and the T is for telophase. So remember PMAT, the stages in order. The very first step is prophase. Prophase because it's the beginning step, the nucleus is still there, and it's going to go away later on, but this is a stage where it's actually still there. The chromosomes are visible. In fact, we say they're condensing, which means they are thickening and visible. The next stage is metaphase, M for metaphase, but I also like to remember M for middle because in this stage, the chromosomes line up in the middle of the cell. The nucleus has been disassembled, it's no longer there, so we've got the chromosomes in the middle waiting there. Next, the A is for anaphase. In anaphase, I like to think as the A for away. The chromosomes move away. They are moving to opposite sides of the cell, so they are moving towards the poles of the cell. Now, one thing to point out, these chromosomes, they're not moving by themselves. They actually have something called spindles. These spindles are fibers that help move the chromosomes to the ends. Kind of helps them move along. The last stage of mitosis, think T for telophase. In telophase, the chromosomes are actually at the complete opposite ends, and new nuclei are forming on each side to make these two new cells. The nuclei are starting to surround the chromosomes on both sides. I like to think of the T for two because you can really see in the step that the end goal is going to be two cells. And in the human body, they're each going to have 46 chromosomes. And again, remember, they are identical. Now, cytokinesis is responsible for the final separation into two cells by splitting the cytoplasm, which completes after the PMAP mitosis stages. So why did all this matter? Without understanding cell division, we wouldn't understand how growth and repair happens, because they both require more cells to be made. Understanding mitosis is also very important for cancer research. Cancer itself is uncontrolled cell growth. So in other words, uncontrolled mitosis. Well, that's it for the Amoeba Sister.